Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. It's rare to have Jim Ghazali on for weeks and weeks without talking a little horse racing. I'm glad we brought that back here on the show today. I don't know if you guys covered anything Tuesday with uh, with me out here, but we do have a couple of stories surrounding uh, Churchill Downs uh, in Kentucky and also Saratoga horse racing as well. So you'll get your fix with that, those of you tuned in. But again, we have some other stories to touch on as well. Jim, welcome back to Newswire. Thanks for making some time for us today. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good, Craig. Thanks for having me. And by the way, LegalSportsReport.com is where you can read all of the stories that we're going to discuss here on the show. Let's start off with North Carolina as we head toward the final quarter of the year. How has sports betting's outlook been for them in 2024, and what can we expect in the future? Yeah, I think one of the more interesting things when North Carolina uh, launched their, their sports betting market earlier this year, for me at least, was golf and, and NASCAR. And back in in the springtime, Craig, we, we talked pretty heavily about both of those outfits. So I wanted to kind of check in and see how the golf betting was going in North Carolina. And for the Tar Heel State, it's, it's been doing pretty well. Um, I know the, the tournament there this weekend was delayed yesterday. And I know that that first round just got underway in North Carolina earlier this morning. But overall, North Carolina accounts for about 8% of all golf bets nationwide. So with a top 20 market overall, North Carolina, in terms of sports betting handle widespread, uh, that 8% of total golf bets coming from North Carolina puts it as a a top five golf market uh, nationwide. So certainly over indexing in golf betting. Now, overall golf betting, the PGA Tour told me a couple weeks ago, overall golf betting nationwide is up 20% which is right in line with the overall sports betting landscape. We've seen about 20% year-on-year volume increase, and and a lot of that has to do with a lot of these larger states, more popular states coming online in the last year or so. Um, Massachusetts, Ohio, uh, Kentucky comes to mind. So when I looked into the numbers, there are a handful of states that do break out individual uh, sports-specific statistics and golf being one of them in a, in a handful of states and, and that looked to be more along the lines of about a 10 percent increase but overall golf betting is up now when you look at the the entire landscape of sports betting you know i think to kind of gauge success for individual sports you want to see how much of that that overall piece of the pie is growing now while total volume is up, like I've said, that overall market share for golf isn't necessarily up. And in fact, in, in 2022, golf had you know, 1.43% of overall sports betting in 2024. So far, it's been 1.35%. Now, it's worth mentioning that we don't have eyes in every single state in terms of, you know, specific golf betting figures, there's, um, you know, four or five, maybe six states that that break it out. But in talking to the the PGA Tour, they are really banking on the live betting markets. We've seen the live betting menu for golf grow uh, substantially over the last, you know, six, eight, 12 months. So they're really banking on that. And they did tell me they're not declaring any, you know, sort of victories just yet in North Carolina four or five months in, but they are rather pleased with the growth in golf betting, especially from the Tar Heel State, Craig. All right, good notes there on North Carolina. Again, you could read about this column over at LegalSportsReport.com. All right, this one caught me a little bit by surprise. Kentucky Downs adding a new sports betting operator. And uh, Jim, it's a sports betting operator, very popular in Las Vegas. It's Circa Sportsbook. And, And the reason why I guess I find this a little fascinating, Jim, is because Superbook, which was exclusive out of Las Vegas, ended up pulling some of their uh, books, their sponsorships in, and partnerships in different places in the country. Why has Circa decided to jump into Kentucky? Yeah, so Circa launched their online sports betting app in Kentucky about six or so, uh, a little bit more than that, mid-May. Um, they, they started taking bets in Kentucky online. So this has always really been part of the plan in opening up a, a retail bricks and mortar sports book in the state. Uh, as you know, Craig, the state 
allows the online operators to have uh, agreements with racetracks. So Circa, they have their, their online licensing through uh, Cumberland Run, which is a harness track. And now they're going to be opening a temporary sports book uh, at Kentucky Downs next week. And I, and I say it's temporary because uh, I think they're, they're trying to really capitalize on the start of football season and just get something up and running. All the regulatory hurdles have been cleared. So uh, in speaking with some people there, they said, you know, the, the timing just worked out that football season's on the horizon and they want to be able to offer this. Now, what, what I found interesting is that this is going to be the closest retail sports book to Nashville, which is a very popular uh, market for Kentucky Downs and the, the attached casino there. So what they're hoping is that they're able to draw that crowd from Nashville, Tennessee, that is looking for a more, you know, traditional style of, you know, watching football and placing a bet on it and, and not being tied to their phone for the entire right. afternoon. Um, so they do get a lot of business from that Nashville market. And, you know, Nashville, Tennessee obviously has mobile sports betting, but there's no casinos in Tennessee. So this is certainly a draw for them. And, and you know, as the, the, the horse racing fan that I am, you know, I, I wanted to see how this all matched up with their race dates at Kentucky Downs. They, they have a, a short sort of boutique meet there. It only lasts seven days, but for them, two of those days will co coincide live racing with NFL football opening night that Thursday, September 5th. There's live racing during the day at Kentucky Downs and then all day Sunday that September 8th, week one of NFL. Uh, you'll have live racing there along with that full slate of NFL games. So that Circus Sportsbook opening at Kentucky Downs next week and then the more permanent, larger build out is expected sometime next summer. All right. Now, uh, let's get a final story from you here, Jim, before we let you go for the weekend. Uh, let's hit on Saratoga. You've got some numbers in from horse racing. So here we go, Jim. How are things going in upstate New York? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't let you get away with a, a couple of weeks in a row without uh, talking about horse racing. Um, so we're about halfway through the, the summer racing season up here at Saratoga, and it's been, been raining uh, seemingly for – for the last week, you know, as it has been up and down the, the entire East Coast, really. And, and that's really affected the racing up here in, in terms of uh, being able to run on the turf, which usually has larger fields, uh, more handle. So halfway through the, the meet, handle last year compared to this year is, is relatively flat, uh, slight increase really only a couple of thousand dollars, really. Um, and a lot of that has to do with with the rain. Uh, it's taken a, a bunch of races off the turf. You know, last weekend was a big weekend, Whitney Day at Saratoga, and they had uh, two or, or three marquee turf races. Two of them got canceled. One got moved to the dirt. And, and when that happens, a lot of the horses scratch out because they don't want to run on the dirt. So that's affected handle. Attendance kind of walking around there on the weekends. Um, like I do, it, it just seems a lot quieter than in years past. And speaking with some folks at Naira, it seems like the Belmont Stakes weekend up here in early June, you know, really kind of took a lot of the uh, excitement out of the summer. Perhaps some people coming into town for their, their annual trip to Saratoga. They did that back in June for the Belmont rather than the summer. Jim, great stuff. As always, have a great weekend, and we'll catch up again next week on Newswire. Thanks, Greg.